Hello, this is Stephen Allen. Yes, we are back with another Batman 66 episode review. Today, we'll be reviewing the episode, The Clock King Gets Crowned, which will be, sadly, the last time we will ever see The Clock King. So without further ado, let's get into the review. We previously left off in the previous episode, but The Clock King in town is planning another big crime. He's captured the dynamic duo and has placed them in a giant hourglass. Essentially, once the sense of time's run out, the Cape Crusader will be dead. How will they get out of this one? Well, we don't know that answer yet, we have to get to the credits. After that, we then pick up where we left them off. Now, once the- now, whilst they're in the hourglass, Batman and Robin decide to, to topple it over by hitting it back and forth. Then when it falls over, they pretty much roll it out, roll the- roll, um, roll the hourglass out of the hideout and it crashes into an oncoming truck, essentially releasing them. We then cut back to the Clock King, who is arranging for his uh, next two of his next big crimes. And we also find out that he plans to rob a millionaire's antique pocket watches, as he has sold a one of his trick clocks to Aunt Harriet who tends to give it off to Bruce as a birthday gift. However, one of the Clock King's henchmen has screwed up as he has placed his, the atomic emergent energy directional control switch meant for a bomb to be used in the final caper is instead in the clock. Clock King realizes that this whole operation could be destroyed could be ruined, so he and his henchmen quickly make their escape. I should be noted there is a scene before this where Aunt Harriet is at Commissioner Gordon the Chief of Harris office where he is inviting the two for a for Bruce's birthday. We then of course get which is then followed by a scene where Batman calling Commissioner Gordon Chief of Harrow, informing them of what's happened. I like the scene as it gets Aunt Harriet to do more in the episode instead of being essentially a side character, which I like that she's starting to get more screen time, and believe it or not, in a few more episodes, she will get the biggest screen time, arguably, of her of her character's time on the show. Anyway, we then cut back to Batman and Robin in the Batcave, who are searching through the Bat Files because, as we know in the previous episode, before Clockling left them to die, he noted that a man by the name of Mr. Smith will help him for his big caper. So, they're looking through the files. Just as that's happening, the Clock King and his henchmen knock out Alfred, in a very funny way, and are stealing the antique pocket watches whilst also getting the clock back. And I like how this is a back and forth bit. There's a lot of nice suspense there. Absolutely love it. It's fantastic. And Harriet then walks in, and the, just as the Clock King and his men are about to make their escape, and plan to take in Harriet as a hostage. Alfred quickly throw, well, hits the alarm on his button to alert Batman and Robin of, of something's going on upstairs. Batman and Robin come upstairs, disguised as Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, and realize what's happening, and asks that they can take, says they can take the baubles, but as long as they don't, as long as they don't take Aunt Harriet. I like how he's willing to give up essentially a cool, like, essentially a fortune for Aunt Harriet, it goes to show that Bruce does really care about Aunt Harriet. If, however, just as the Clock King and his man make that try to make their escape, Dick ends up knocking out one of the henchmen. The Clock King makes their escape with the clock, but leaves behind Aunt Harriet and the antique pocket watchers. So essentially, Clock King has failed to get his objective, something very interesting. Now, if, of course, they do calm Aunt Harriet, make sure so she gets plenty of rest, but Batman is stumped. They're more interested in that clock than they were in these pocket watches. What's the game? They go back to the hideout. They go back to the back cave. Sorry, not hideout, the back cave. And look up possible Smiths. Finding out Mr. Smith, who is locked up and is swinging on a rock pile. That triggers something in Batman's head, realizing that a Smith can also be a blacksmith. And because of a cl clocking's obsession with clocks, there is the clock tower that has a blacksmith. And when he and when the clock strikes at a certain time, it triggers the hammer. Realizing that it mu there must be some connection, they call up Gordon and ask, what's the adjacent across, across the clock tower? Where it turns out, the clock gleams plans to steal an Alcesium clock worth a fortune. And of course, for a villain obsessed with clocks and time, it's a perfect caper, perfect thing to end his crime spree on. 
We then cut back to the Clock King with his henchmen about to make their heist. We then find out what what he planned to do. He planned to put this bomb on the clock um, on the blacksmith. They're going to be disguised wearing gas masks, make their way over to the building, uh, heliport. The gas will then incapacitate everyone. They will then steal the clock and fly away in the helicopter as it's on the heliport. Pretty ingenious, and he's thought this out, and I really buy it. Eventually, Batman and Robin arrive, and a bat fight breaks out. Now, I really love this fight, because, like, the first off, just as they're fighting, the clock's working in the background. And it's done to the rhythm, uh, done to the tune of the Anvil Chorus. And I had to actually research that to find out about the tune. I don't like it gets its own little theme. Batman and Cause end up victorious over the henchmen and of course wrap up the Clock King and his henchwoman. We then end the scene with Commission, with them at police headquarters congratulating them on taking down the Clock King and of course Gordon reveals that there is a surprise party for Bruce Wayne because Batman and Robin says they are unable to attend. I love that scene how Bruce, I think, was generally shocked about a surprise party and had to find out that way. I, I, I love it. I absolutely do. We then end the episode there and saying that Batman and Robin will be next week battling Egghead. I like how the cast are getting a bit more fleshed out. Alfred, even though I had that little scene of alerting and genuinely caring for Aunt Harrier when she was you know, after almost being kidnapped, hell, Aunt Harry getting more to do in this episode with, you know, trying to set up a birthday party and essentially almost getting kidnapped. Again, I really like that the characters getting much more to do in the episode. Here we also get to see, like, how reliant Batman, um, how reliant these two guys are on Batman. When Chief O'Hara says, I could have done it better myself, I think Adam West almost couldn't keep it in or get the line out. Was saying thank you, Chief and Hara. That's high praise indeed. Almost in a sarcastic tone. I really, absolutely love that. Batman and Roman here are fine as always, but I've liked the bit when we get to see more of Dick and Bruce in this episode. Something I think that we should really do. They should really do more in the series. We get to spend more time with them than with Batman and Robin. But I think we do kind of in later episodes. But of course, what do I feel about the Clock Kick? What I feel about the Clock King from the previous episode still stands. I find him, he's alright, he's not bad, he's not terrible. He exists in between. I love his obsession with clocks, his obsession with time, and especially love that when he threw a fit, when one of his goons nearly mucked it up, showing how really precious he is to the timetable. And how, uh, I really love that. I love the costume design. Again, this is not a Batman villain, this is a Green Arrow villain, but I can't deny that he does fit the Batman Rogues Gallery quite well in this in, in this incarnation. Interesting fact, uh, in the Batman 66 spin-off comics, it is revealed that his real name is Morris Tetch, and he is the twin brother, well, he's the brother, not twin, he's the brother of Jervis Tetch, aka the Bad Hatter, and it makes sense, they dress alike, they both have the same eyebrows, they both kind of have a moustache, and they both have an obsession. With Clock King, it's with clocking, it's clocks and time. The Mad Hatter, well, hats and theft. I like I like that in the comics. Now, this is the last time we see the Clock King, and even and Walter honestly managed to do pretty well with what he was given and managed to make the character somewhat enjoyable. I understand why he didn't wasn't brought back, kind of in the same way of the Archer. However, like the Archer, I wouldn't have mind him coming back. However, for this one, he should definitely come back for another outing, not a team-up. But, and hell, with an later episode involves manipulating time to go backwards and forwards, I thought that was a completely missed opportunity to be used with Clock King. Overall, he is fun, but he is average. My first villain of Season 2 to find pretty average, and... Okay. Not terrible. Okay. The Clock King Gets Crowned is, for me just like this previous one, is another okay to fun episode. Not great, or groundbreaking, or fantastical, but it is fun and okay. The, it has a lot, these two episodes bring a lot of memorable moments. The Sammy Davis Jr. window cameo, the fight scene in the clock tower, the hourglass death trap, and the Clock King is an okay villain. I really like the design of the character, how he looks more like a duke, 
and his henchmen are also pretty colourful too. But other than that, it's kind of okay. Average at best. And there we have it. That was The Clock King Gets Crowned. The last time we'll be seeing The Clock King. Kind of disappointed. Next, Join us next time as Batman and Robin will tackle one of their greatest villains on the show for his first debut, Egghead. So stick around for that one. Until next time, this has been the Stephen Hour. Join me, ne- join me in the next Stephen time, the same Stephen channel, and the same Stephen Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.